and star it's top rated okay let's see that okay great then uh, first of all good evening and if anybody from different time zone where the sun is slowly coming up good morning to you if anybody facing mid or ahead the sunlight there good afternoon to you i believe most of you should be from um, the place where i am i mean in india if not if you are from different places welcome to this program and others also welcome to this program so now what i'm going to do here uh, next few hours uh, okay quickly i come here from uh, dias uh, column is a little low volume aha uh -huh. okay i'm hearing little low volume can you please try to increase your volume in your lap abhijit anything you want to say no okay fine thanks for getting on mute uh, by the way is my volume better because i'm hearing one person saying the volume is low if i increase little more than this it will be good but the next door person will come and hit me hey why are you shouting loud okay so anyway try to set up your pc um okay that's good great i know the first few minutes it will be just settling down the ground for the people joining there and uh, i'm just quickly looking at the names i can see hitesh abhi chanush arvin deepak dev asha vardhan okay pankaj prashant sashi kumar and then one more oh, both are same sashi kumar satish shiva okay lakshmi yeah lakshmi is there sri is there okay if i miss some of your names don't feel bad i may be missed out in the reading session good day Okay, let's kick start. Okay, uh, what's the day today? Is um, I know it's a Friday. Most of you should be in your office call or should be in your uh, some activity. First of all, thanks for spending time out of that and coming out for this program, because uh, doing on a working day is not so easy, right? But again, online now we are mostly with a laptop. One side it will be office work. One side it will be your anything on the personal side. so if you are doing that way i am happy that you are able to do multitasking so your brain is working very efficiently okay what i'll do is uh, quickly i'll share the screen to start the content so that's a better way of starting okay share screen here's my screen uh, black screen let's get there um okay very good okay uh, quickly a confirmation are you seeing the screen i mean the um, ppt are you able to see the screen we can see yeah. your screen yes perfect thanks a lot yes we can see great the first screen looks so amazing i am pmp certified wow sounds good right so this is what uh, many of us look out for in the market because of various levels of demand or sometimes we have taken a, a resolution that okay i will close this certificate in the year 2020 or you tried it in 2018 and 2019 now it become 2020 no go i will do that various reasons are there but again uh, uh, first of all i am pmp certified is a really good uh, statement to say when you try for a new job or at least try for a good promotion in your organization or at least when you have a conversation with your client it's not always changing job it's not always a salary it's about self satisfaction when you do something when you do with good understanding and good knowledge the level of happiness is something different right uh, i know every one of us has some special skill with us when you do something on that special skill somebody will definitely appreciate you hey that's a good job man you did a good job you were you were you were driving the car really well some people give you appreciation hey your skill driving skill is really good and that day you feel good okay i did a good job and that self satisfaction is very efficient and important than having money in your pocket in a sense feeling so great right and to do that we need to learn certain skills one of the important skill which is a highly in demand in the market is project management professional let's see what it is and then let's go a little more step by step i'm going to take at least one hour 30 minutes um, within that we'll try to cover as much and again we'll try to take some questions from you Okay, you can come up any time. Stop me. Hey, Shiram, I'm not understanding this. Can you explain it? I'll try to explain it to you. Right? That's a goal of this program. There is no uh, one-way communication. It's always two-way communication. You can go ahead and talk to me. With this note, let's move. 
let's see if agenda okay any program should have an agenda so agenda at the high level of course i'm going to have a lot of content uh, high level i'm saying that what is pmp why pmp is important in the job market of course and how to take pmp exams online one of the best thing happening in the market is exams can be taken online at your home at your laptop like what you're doing now the same way you're going to do it i'm going to explain what it is do we have sessions and study plan to get certified okay that's a very important thing right okay all good man i know pmp is there for a long time i know about pmp than you but how to do that what's the way uh, is it guaranteed that i'll clear it 100 percent okay, a lot of these questions coming up so let's listen to those questions before i go there uh, i will quickly put the uh, the mic back to you and uh, if anybody has any specific question i will just take to my ears so that when i run through i will try to recollect those information okay i have around 20 people around here and maybe a few more will join me sometime do anybody have a specific part of this program you say that hey shiram can you cover this area Please go ahead abhijit i think even the mic is on you want to say something um uh no sir like uh i'm just testing this out as well because you know this is the first time i'm on I ipad <laughs> okay good your attempt is good but again you can um i can hear a lot of background sound from your side good there okay thanks for that get you can get to mute mode anybody else have any questions or any thought process hey shriram i'm expecting this from yes. you yes sir yes sir uh this is lakshmish actually i am having one question regarding like uh i certification ah let me sorry your voice is breaking maybe something wrong there please go ahead again second time yeah. now now is it okay right please go ahead yeah like the uh, validity for uh, certification actually if i okay okay uh, somehow i uh, i'm able to give the words here and there validity of a certification you got it maybe you can uh, type the rest of the information i'll see that something wrong with your mic okay anybody else who want to have any questions there please go ahead hello okay okay with that case i feel there is no questions you are all there to listen to me hey shriram i don't have any questions please go ahead man i want to listen to you then we'll then we'll think whether the question is there or not right sometimes when we go to when i go to um, any uh, purchase or a dress material store with my spouse what color you want hey come on yeah let's take me to the store then i'll decide what color is there right because my mind will work only when i see the dress maybe like that let's wait for that Okay. Uh, yeah. Good there. Good there. Let's move. Uh, Lakshmi, I got your point. The validation of the certification. I will explain about it. Good. Let's move. Let's move. First of all, let's see the demand for managers and leaders as we go forward into the market. Uh, some topics are coming up here. Uh, good. Right. Good. I got two questions from Lakshmi. I got one question. Daha got from a question. I am parking both of the question because both of the question. going to be answered in the flow so please stay with me for the question and answers thanks for the question i appreciate it good then so let's go to this part of uh, demand for managers and leaders what's happening why we need this pmp part now there was a stats study in uh, 2017 by a us based organization called anderson group along with the pmi where they were able to run through around 11 top countries in the world of course you can see your country in the list the flags here in that they were able to find that there is going to be a great demand because of like a talent gap i believe you understand the term talent gap there is a gap what is the expectation in the market what is the people level in the market it is not about the count of the people it is about the quality of the people okay don't take it as a count count is very huge we have a lot of people now how to fill this gap if you don't fill this gap what's the problem is we are going to lose around 207.9 billion this was a situation in 2017 now currently with what's happening in the market the ratio is going to be very high because of the job nature and the landscape is totally changing i'm going to talk more about it now this was a stat catched up years back up to 2027 what's the demand going to be there they already found there is a great gap it's going to further expand more 
if it's not being made out, you're going to lose around 207 billion. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to worry about 207 billion because you're not going to give me a pocket. It's okay not to worry. But let's see what's the demand, which area? When you say which area, um, wide range of rules and more job openings are going to happen in the next 10 years or seven years of timeline. And specifically, certain industries are going to open up very, very high. Right? Some of the traditional industries, some of the um, professional courses, industries, this is going to be very high. Specifically, they talk about the healthcare sector. This they published in 2017. And look at today, healthcare is going to be the top most. Now they're saying 17%. You can imagine it's going to be going forward, right? Now I'm putting a few more industries here. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, I can see some questions coming up. Um, yes, please put up the questions. But when you put the question, also listen to what I'm talking. Again, that will be useful. Yeah? We'll go to the point where you can start asking the questions also. Good there. Thanks for the questions. Listen to the session now. Focus on the session. Now, getting back on the point of uh, industry demand. When you see the industry demand here, I want to just point out some of the industries where the leadership and manager role, which is going to be highly in demand. When I say that, I just put out certain point. If you can see in this area, just put arrow on that. Attrition, particularly, there is going to be high attrition always, right? Particularly as a seasoned practitioners reach retirement age is creating many project related job openings. This was study in 2017. And now the situation is changing a lot where many people are shelling out of this program of project management and new fresh thought process coming in. Now, when I want to address this, this was studied in the year 2017, considering 11 top countries, where only few countries have the project originating. When I say project originating, that's a country where the new thought process, new project getting initiated with a huge amount of money. Now, with the current situation happening, every country is thinking that, why don't we do ourselves? I believe you are getting it. Instead of depending on one particular place, why don't we do on ourselves? I don't want to point, point to any country here, but I'm telling that wherever you are, there the projects are going to originate in next six to eight months time. Today it will be so shaky. I'm not saying it's good now, it's bad now, but I'm sure in eight, 12 months it will start getting better. When it gets better, the demand will start increasing wherever you are, whichever country you are, it's going to originate because every country is going to desire on self-sustainability. They want to do the project on their own. When they do the project on their own, definitely they need qualified people on management. I am not saying only for PMP. It can be any course which talks about leadership, management efficiently, will be in high demand, right? So let's go one by one. I'm not marketing on for PMP here because I have a lot of courses with me. I'm just trying to tell you that which is highly going to be needed is leadership skills and ability of efficient management. Right? Some segments which I showed you now. Let me go furthermore. Now, why we have to go for the leadership and manager role? That's a question. Because some people feel that, Shriram, I'm technically sound man. I'm doing technical management for so many years. I feel so comfortable being an architect or designer or a technical engineer. Why should I go for it? When you say, why should I go for it? Please read these lines from the stats. Project management oriented occupations, non-project management occupations, right? When you see that the gap is going to be so high, it's in the thousand dollars. I mean, one lakh five thousand or fifty thousand dollars, and it is around fifty-eight thousand dollars per annum. What this number is indicating is almost fifty percent difference or a hundred percent difference than what a non-leadership or management-oriented job. I'm not saying those jobs are bad. It's also good, but again, always in the world, the C cadre or the top CEO, CIO, leadership cadre, their income is always different. You may be so good in artificial intelligence. You may be so great scientist, but end of day on top of you, one person will be there where this person will be reporting to them. And that person's scale is always different, right? There is no debate on this point, but always the manager track is highly demanded. But we have to understand what is manager track, right? Let me talk a little more. What I've shown you is the real stats, which has been released by PMI website. These stats are available in pmi.org. If you go there, it's a PDF where you can anybody can download and read about this content. It's actually a big document. I bought something about important areas. Let's go a little more. Okay, so far I said that, okay, manager track is important, leadership track is important, well and good. 
but you have to understand that what do you mean by skillful leaders and skillful managers because some get a feel that i'm in the industry for 10 years i'm in the industry for 15 years okay i will get a manager role i'm in the same company for eight years next year they'll promote me if anybody thinking that way i will tell you industry has changed a lot in the last three to four years or the last five years none of the company offering leadership role for the person just sitting in the same place for a time. It's not happening. If it happens, it may be the company run by somebody on the relative side. It's not the shareholder company. It won't work like that. Now the market is trending towards skillful leaders, skillful managers. Now the word skill is getting attached. Now what do you mean by skillful? It's interesting. So when you say skillful, there are certain skills which is expected in the market. It is not about the years of experience. Beyond the years of experience, certain skills are expected. Let's see certain skills which is covered under the PMI, PMP. I'm going to talk about that, okay? They call it as a talent triangle. This triangle, what you see here, it's called as a talent triangle. This is expected whenever you go for the leadership track oriented jobs. Even today, I'll tell you, you may go to any job, any domain. You may be from the software industry, you may be from banking domain, pharma industry, you may be from the army, you may be from the government sector, any segment in the world, in 208 countries, wherever you go for a job interview on leadership track, your questions will be targeted only in these three areas. What are they? The first one starts with, as a leader, as a manager, you are expected to have strategy and business management idea. What is strategy business management? You should know the strategic planning of your organization. You should know the benefits of the management. You should know the business acumen. You know the business model. You should know what domain you're working. If you're a carpenter, you should know how the carpenting work happens. If you're a finance person, you should know how the finance segment works. If you're a musician, you should understand next five years what will be the musician future. And that's domain and business knowledge. If you don't have that, I'll tell you it's going to be so tough. I have some of my friends, I ask them, can you tell me what's your CEO's full name? I don't know. Can you tell me the motto of your company? I don't know. Uh, can you tell me what are the next three years plans of your company? Do they have any strategy? I don't know. Who is the competitor of your company? I don't know. How many years are working there? Eight years. Are you expecting promotion? <laughs> yeah, I'm expecting. It won't happen. You should know which company you are working, what's your ground, where you stand. When you know that strategy, and that person has a knowledge to go further. Now, how the PMP is going to help you? It's going to talk about the strategy and the business management, how it works in an organization, that's a basement. Okay, I know this is a small part I'm explaining. Two more segments are there. The one segment which is talking about technical knowledge. And this area will tell you many people get confused. Whenever I say technical knowledge, people think technology. They start learning the technology. They run behind every companies and start learning technology. Can, you, can I learn this? Can I learn that? No, that's not. Technical project management talks about how do you do the project management? How do you do risk management? How do you do schedule management? How do you do agile practices if your company is practicing agile? How do you do life cycle management? And that's called technical. So, so you mean, Shiram, I don't want to know technology. You should learn technology. You should know how it works doesn't mean you have to sit and do the work. I'm a music director. I should know how the keyboard will play. I should know how the drums will play. That's fine. I don't want to sit and play the drums. I will have somebody to play the drums, but I know what music should come out of the drums. That technical knowledge and technology is enough for us. If you go deep dive inside, it's fine. If you have a passion, do it, but don't die there itself. Come out of it and start giving ideas because you have a strategy in your mind. Next three years where the company should be, you have in your mind. Along with that, if you have a technical knowledge with the technology, you will be highly in demand in the market. I'll tell you, mark my words, you'll be highly, highly in demand. Now, two areas are covered, business, technical. What's the third one? And this area is the craziest area. Many people think that they want to be, but they couldn't. Leadership skills. Now, what is leadership skills? coming out of the boss mindset and leader mindset. It's so easy to say, hard to do. And in leadership skills, we talk about efficient communication, influencing abilities, right? Conflict resolution techniques, having been with the people, helping the people. These are good to hear, good to see in the movies. But in reality, when you are on a fire, 
you don't know what to do. First, you will survive yourself. You will not try to help others, right? Many times it happens. It sometimes happened to me. Now, why I put all these points here is, this is called skillful management. Now, the question is, how much of proportion you have with you? I'm sure everybody has this with you, but the proportion will vary. One, person, one area will have 10%, other area will have 60%. So the proportion variation will decide whether you will get into the job or stay outside, right? That's a little bit. Okay, anyway, uh, I just want to give a heads up on that. Let's see a quick video on this part and then come back where I'm going to talk about PMP. You'll be surprised why this guy not talking about PMP. I'm talking about PMP on the market. What is demanded? If you're surprised at why I couldn't get promoted, why I should look for a job, you should learn certain basics of this, right? Good. Shall we quickly get to the video? Anybody here to say yes? You want to say, going to go for the video? Sure, please. Great point. Thanks. Let's get there. Let's get there. Well, the talent triangle says there are. I know the audio is not there. Please hold on. Still, software has to improve a lot and doing that part. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gentleman looks good. Let's listen to him. Well, the talent triangle says there are three areas that we should be growing in professionally, professionally developing as project managers. And those three areas make up the talent triangle. They are technical, business or strategic, and leadership. So let's take a look at those three. The first leg in that talent triangle is technical. So technical skills as a project manager. Think back to when you took the PMP exam. You remember the knowledge areas that were in the PMBOK guide. Well, the technical category really falls into or follows some of those technical skills. How do I define the scope? How do I determine my budget? How do I develop my schedule? How do I manage risks? What about quality? So the training that we need to, uh, to grow in as project managers addresses those technical skills included in that would be things like Agile or Scrum or other practices. So technical is one area, the first area really of the talent triangle. A second area of the talent triangle is strategy or business management. Think of this as someone who sees the big picture. So again, thinking back to that survey, many employers came back, managers of project managers, and said, I wanna make sure that my PMs understand the big picture. So some of the topics that fall into this category are more strategic. So we're thinking about things like uh, business acumen, better decision-making, uh, managing complexity. So these are some areas, even financial areas, or procurement complexities ways that we can grow as project managers. So those are areas that we need to receive training on an ongoing basis. The third leg of the talent triangle, it's called leadership. And leadership is just what you would expect as a project manager. You're influencing people, you're building teams, you're motivating people, you've got a reward system in place. So this area lends itself to training topics such as negotiation, conflict resolution, motivating. So leadership makes up that third area of the talent triangle so we have three skill areas we have technical skills we have strategic and business management and then we have this third area called leadership that comprises the talent triangle okay hope that's a good video and when this gentleman is talking about the information uh, if you find out it looked like almost like a uh, master's in uh, business administration or master's in leadership scores, where it covers the key factors. Now the question is why and why it's relevant here. Your PMP subject is blended with the three subject on three areas. If you take the book of uh, PMBOK, the PMBOK is divided by these three segments. So you get the essence of all these three when you get a cube as a PMP qualified. Okay, let me take next step to expand a little more. Okay, before we go there, first we have to know that from where this PMP is coming up, okay. The PMI, some of you may be aware of this institute called PMI, and this comes from the United States. Of course, big things from US. And the PMI Institute is there for so many years, and if you know, it's from the year 1969. I'm not sure how many of you were born by the time. And uh, it's there, it's a big company, with a huge amount of uh, money running up. And uh, this gentleman, Sunil, is the CEO and president of PMI Institute from August uh, 20, 
2019. And after he came in, a lot of changes. So many years, PMI was in the same place. Even though doing a good job, they were in the same place. But after Sunil took over, the upside down changes, main changes, color got changed. Okay. Before that, it was a pure blue, now it got changed. Apart from that, a lot of changes happening up. He is the one promoting a lot of advantage for the PMI, PMP, and other courses. So many companies are recommending it. See, I'll tell you what's the advantage. When they promote more about the efficiency of this particular certification, many companies opt for it, telling that anybody qualified to the PMP or particular certificate, you can come up for the job. That's what are happening now. I can see Sunil yeah. Prashar and his team doing good job. Oh, oh God, if you don't mind, can you get the mute? Thank you. Great, Dad. So now what happened is, uh, the, when the year the PMP started, in the year 1984, I'm sure some of you born by this time, and by this time, the PMP started in the United States, and again, it spread across. Now, it's there been in around 208 countries, and now some of the countries are not even listed in the United States, United Nations, even. But again, 208 countries, the certification is running. So it's not only in your city, your place, it's all over the world. So what are the credentials PMI has? A lot of credentials, you see, bunch of certifications they have. Out of which, what we do in Sri learning, we do on CAPM, we do on PMP, we do on ACP. Yeah. Can you please make our good? Okay. I know somebody has joined. Thanks for joining. Kindly please put yourself in the mute mode. I appreciate your support. Uh, okay. Thanks for that. I know somebody's in trouble. Please get yourself in mute mode so that you can avoid the background sound. I appreciate it. Okay, quickly coming back on the PMI Institute, just to get a ground. Uh, you may be surprised, why should I learn this, man? I'm not only certificate. I know I agree, it, but still you should know from where you're getting it. Uh, you, you should have the basic knowledge on that. So now they have a few certificates out of which we are serving around CAPM, PMP, and ACP. And this is a flagship one. And this is the Agile certification. Anybody in the Agile, we talk about Agile in PMI Institute. Some more certification got added recently, which is called Disciplined Agile. It is not at listed. It's going to become listed up. It's called Disciplined Agile, DA, right? They call it Disciplined Agile. Okay, this is all happening. Uh, but again, you know that the PMI Institute, uh, you should also know that what PMI Institute do. Uh, in fact, I have one of the video which explains. They're a big forum. They have a lot of, lot of knowledge base. Why I'm putting these messages, even though you do PMP or not, I would recommend you to visit the PMI.org website listen to some of the good videos happening there. Uh, some of the top managers and leaders talk about the best practices in the market. And that will change your mindset. There are a lot of case studies there. There are real scenarios being explained there. That's very vital. Of course, certification helps you for the job. After getting the job, how are you going to do the work? There are many people qualified highly, but total failure. I think some of you agree with me. There are qualified failures in the market in the sense of in college topper, school topper, but when you go to the job, no, they couldn't do that, right? But what's happening? For that, you have to go through a certain learning process. What's happened in the market? Why they fail? Why a project fails? Where I have to correct myself? A lot of information is there. Quickly, I'll play some video about <clears throat> this institute so that you'll get some clue about it. Ooh, where is the video? The video is here. is great for keeping up with the trends in project management, for understanding the changes and innovations. I think that the PMI conference is very rich in content and that no matter what industry you're from, there is something here for everyone. High quality, well-informed subject matter experts. They're presenting actual projects, actual problems that they've actually incurred. And it's been great having a lot of classes and seminars around the new Agile approach. You want to take advantage of the training, advantage of the tools. 
I was able to meet project managers like me struggling with the same things that I think of every day. You will find somebody here that you will connect with and they can help you get to the next level in your career. Push your knowledge to the limit. Energize with cutting edge global perspectives from world renowned difference makers. Celebrate the past year's highest achievers. Hone every side of your game to be a true champion of change. And I would say it, it's second to none. PMI Global Conference 2018. Okay, that video brings some knowledge about the PMI. Okay, that's background. You got the background. Okay, now let's go to the interesting area. Oh man, we have to talk about this guy. Okay, some of you know about him. And uh, let me introduce this guy. Uh, this is Sriram. And Sriram has around 18 years of experience in the industry. Uh, some of the top companies, Fortune 12, Fortune 20, these are the companies that worked out. And Sriram also comes with a few degrees, masters, MCA, MBA, and MSc in psychology. Okay, psychology is an interesting subject which talks about human brain thought process but not astrology. Some people ask me, Shiram, you know psychology, right? Can you tell me what I will do next? Ooh, I cannot tell that. It's about human behavior, thought process, right? It's so interesting about the brain. I know some of you like brain. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. Let's read about that. And uh, that's on some age, some timeline, but uh, that helped me a little bit in the job and sometimes the marriage life also. Now, coming back on the certificates, that good amount of certificates, which is where in the market, then I realized one of the interesting certificates to start with, where I started with the Scrum certification. After getting this, I got a confidence. Okay, let me also start learning other certificates. Now, turning point in my life is went with the PMP, right? In the year 2016, I got PMP certified. And it's a very, very interesting certificate. I found it so interesting. I felt so bad why I didn't do it for so many years because it spoke about leadership quality really well, right? It talked about interpersonal skills. It talked about efficiency. It brought in a discipline in life. Then I realized it's a very interesting certificate and passes knowledge to many people. That's why I'm training here. And then I trained something on SPC. If some of you are aware about SAFE, Scaled Agile Program. And again, in that I'm an SPC. SPC stands for Program Consultant, where I'm a coach for the program. And there is something called ACP, Agile Certified Practitioner. This is also a certificate which talks about Agile at a big scale. It's a really, really good certificate for the people at the team level and also at the leadership level and Agile coach team. And again, DevOps, I know many people did it. I also did that. I'm not sure how much I'm using it, but it, knowledge helps me a lot. Apart from that, I have a few more certificates, but I don't want to put that here. It's just basics about me. Good there. Advertisement time over. Let's go to the next one. Okay, let's go to this area. What does certificate mean? <coughs> That's very important. By the way, some of you asked a question. I saw the one question coming up. Hey, what is the time of validity of the certificate? Let's go one by one. Okay, this guy is so excited. Same here, one day you're going to be excited. Uh, PMP certificate uh, comes out like this. And there is a number for you. This is called PMI number or PMP number. This number you will put in your resume. So when the HR department, recruitment department calls you, they will take this number, put in the website of PMI and show your name there. Is that valid or not? Now, what is the point of valid? A certificate is valid three years. Valid three years. Now the question is, you know, I say three years, but I can see six years. Okay. Now what will happen is the end of the third year, you can go and renew it. Now question is, when I want to renew it, do I need to write the exam again? No you have something called PDUs. PDU stand for Professional Development Unit, where you sit and listen classes like this, or listen some webinars in their website. Go to their conference, which I showed a video, I showed you, right? They showed something 18 PDUs, some flash line came there. They'll give points like that. What's the meaning here is, after getting qualified as PMP, I'm not keeping quiet. I'm, I'm enhancing myself, I'm learning something. That is a point of PDOs. If you show that, what do you mean by show that? Just go to the website, click it. Hey, I attended this program. They'll give you points. Like that, if you collect 60 points in three years, long duration, then you have to pay some minimum dollars. I think 60 or $100 you have to pay and you get certificate renewed. Like that, you can keep on renewing. Now, question is, Shiram, I don't renew it. I forgot it. What will happen? They will send you reminders, right? Still you left it, what will happen? Certificate will get invalid after grace period of eight months. Now what's the case? You ought to write the exam again. 
right? They've given you eight months of time. Still, if you don't really wait, mm, no go. Lakshmi, hope that answers you. Let me see quickly any other question on the certificate part. Mm, Lakshmi, there, you got the answers. Let me see the chat. Let me quickly see the chat for any certificate related questions before I go there. PMP versus SAFE, okay. Who all can do the certification? Okay. How long does it take to study for PMP? Okay, okay, okay. Good there. For online exam, okay, good. Okay, good there. Who all can do it? That's what I'm going to talk now. Next, next part is on who all can go. Anybody can go for the certificate. What do you mean by anybody? I am going to talk that. See, if you are coming from an institute that is from the college now, and you have only one year experience, you're very new or less than three years experience. Now, what will happen is you will go for a certificate called as a CAPM. CAPM is for Associate in Project Management, Certified Associate in Project Management, the word associate, okay? Now, this is for the people who have lesser amount of experience, less than three years of experience. If you are three years or greater than three years of experience, you can go for PMP, right? Now, question is, Sriram, I am from operations, I am from this domain, I am from that domain. Any domain can go. If you can speak up certain thing about the project, like you know how to handle people, you have learned a little bit about the scheduling part, you know something on um, interpersonal skills, something on stakeholders, something on communication, you are all set. You are all set to go for it. But don't worry too much about, can I go for it? Because it is eligible for anybody. 208 countries, more than 300 domains, a number of people going for the examination. There is no discrimination. These people can come, these people cannot come. They count only on the years of experience. If you have lesser experience, go for CAPM. More than experience, you go for PMP. But both will follow the same book. That's a fun of it. So you read the same book based on years of experience. You will go to one exam with lesser questions, one with the other higher questions. This is what's going to happen, right? Okay, some more questions. I know more questions will come up here. Just a minute, I'm going to see the question. And I'll just drive the show here so that as we cover more points. I know, see a lot of questions coming. I have eight years. Uh, ha, ha, ha. I'm working in college. I have done few projects with the company to number is three. Fantastic, Anush, you're good for it. I'm a sales professional. Yes, you are eligible. Anush is experience A plus, all are eligible. See, the point is um, project is not something you do only in the corporate life. Project happens in every part of your life, right? In a sense, you do a project at your uh, personal things also. Then it's a birthday party is a project. You do some personal activity of moving from one location to another location. That's also a project. And a lot more is there in project. It's not about something you go to the corporate and do a lot, right? Just a minute, just breaking up, just a minute. Okay, back here. Uh, yeah, um, I, I think I spoke about the experience part. Don't worry about the experience part. Probably we will uh, talk about experience as we go deep inside. Now you all have the experience of more than three years. You are ready for the examination. No questions on that, right? You're good for it. Now, let me take to the next stage. Ah, the demand part. Now the point is, is it PMP still valid? This question is still coming up. The question talks about the true value of PMP. There's a question I just Googled it two days back. I mean, yesterday I Googled it. I said, Google seeing that is PMP still valid? There's a question put over the net, like what we everybody have. The true value of a PMP is no secret. The demand for the project manager is growing high and high. In fact, the demand for project managers in the United States alone is growing around 6.1 million jobs coming up. It's the situation a few days back, right? It's going to be more and more higher. I know you Google more than me what I want to say. I just want to put information to you, right? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Anush, I think your questions are flowing through. Probably I can get your point. You can do PMP. Yeah, you can later connect with me in the WhatsApp or with the team where we can help you specialized way, right? So that we can address more questions for the team members here. Good then. There is a question for you. Let's see how much your understanding is about the project management idea. 
just look at the question try to give an answer from your side there is a choice a b c d let's see give it a try let's see your knowledge how you are on your side you can put in the chat window oh as it started coming up shan says answer anush says an answer please go ahead let's see more rm matrix sorry rm matrix right thanks abhijit appreciate it okay somebody giving d few people are giving b go ahead i would expect everybody to give a shot it's okay even if it's wrong that's fine try it if you give correct i will not give you $1000 so don't worry you can be wrong also give a try okay omkar is coming up okay okay fantastic okay i can see few answers coming up abhijit is giving answer omkar is giving okay few of the given answer <laughs> shri says no clue on certain items that's true that's true okay let's see the answer now before i go to the answer okay i know some things are coming up i just put this question to get a feel of you how much you are aware of certain things happening in the project it doesn't mean that you have to be in the project all the time but at least you have a clue of it two team members come to you with a dispute okay dispute is a very important thing regarding their roles and responsibilities when you talk about roles and responsibilities how the roles and responsibilities are handled in this roles and responsibility we talked something very interesting which is called as responsibility assignment matrix r a m right and the answer goes to b i saw 98% of the people answer the ram so ram is not random access memory it's going to talk about uh, responsibility assignment matrix now what here we do a ram matrix shows a connection between work package or activities and the team members ram matrix can be used to define the responsibilities see this is a very common matrix which is used in organization to set up the uh, particular table talks about a number of people and their connection between the work and their responsibilities and that gives a smooth handling of people problems why i put this question here is in any project or any organization we get this problem of people related conflicts i'll tell you most of the organization or at least 99% of organization has this trouble where it goes to the people level where the work doesn't happen even though we have a time we have a money but we can't do the work the reason being is people trouble now when it goes to people problem it mostly get resolved in most of the organization by a ram matrix which is called work responsibility assignment i'm sure some of you doing it i just thought of putting this point to you okay let's go to the next stage okay before i go to the next stage i just want to listen from you what comes to your mind at the moment you say project okay discuss a couple of them can open up the mind you can talk about it what comes to your mind as a project a task okay a temporary endeavor okay somebody got a statement itself which is a fixed start and end date okay so i'll read the books well very good so temporary endeavor to complete okay i know that's a definition of the book <laughs> okay okay good yeah sir <laughs> good there i think you all read the books really well see projects many have an idea that projects may be something in my corporate when you go to job that's a project or something you do in a corporate as a project i always tell that project is always around you for example running this training program or a session now today one and a half hours it's itself a project it has its own uh, ingredients it has a people involved it has a time involved it has a money involved it has stakeholders it has a risk behind that it has a lot of parameters behind that that makes a project but since it is done within only few set of people it's well and good but the number of people going high at the same time number of uh, system higher number of risk higher it gets more complicated where we try to fix those issues right good i can see a lot of answers uh, home car sri and many people thanks for giving answers by the way be surprised why we are talking these areas i want you to get an idea about what you are going to learn without this if you are going to learn what is pmp doesn't help you i think you can google it and find what is pmp very easily rather you have to find certain basics of what you are going to learn right that's the point i'm putting this message and now let's see some factors first of all let's uh, let's put an idea about what is a project in pmp it's explained about right 
Okay, in project, I have two things here. When we talk about two things, we talk about predictive nature project and adaptive nature project. I believe most of you are aware of what is called predictive and adaptive as an English word. But let's see with the project term. When you say predictive nature, it is purely plan driven. You know the plans very well in advance and based on that, you drive the project. And it's going to be of a change it's during and later in the stage of the project will be a little more expensive, right? If you do any changes, the project will be very expensive. I'm just putting a building here on the left side. Can anybody make a clue what building is this? Any, any idea what building is this? Somewhere you've seen this, right? Maybe in Bangalore, somewhere in Chennai, somewhere in Delhi. No? This is Burj Khalifa. Burj Khalifa, okay. You guys got it, man. Burj Khalifa, okay. One of the tallest in Malaysia. Malaysia? No, man, Dubai. It's Dubai. Maybe if you go top of the building, you can see Malaysia. Okay. From there. If you go top of the building, you can see Malaysia from there. This is Burj Khalifa then. Yeah, Burj Khalifa, it's the tallest building. It's the tallest building in Dubai. But again, it is the tallest building till today or tomorrow or next week. And in the meantime, uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia, they're coming with the next building, which is going to be the tallest building. Maybe because of this COVID, all the work has been stopped. If not in Saudi, they're going to release another building, which is going to be the tallest one. Now, coming back to the point, this project is a predictive nature project. They know how many floors are going to come. They know all the segments inside that. They know the time. Know the budget, they know the risk ahead of the time. Some factors are already aware of it. At least 80% of the requirement and details will be aware of it in advance. That's called predictive nature. You know little advance what you're going to get it, right? That's predictive nature. Now let's go to adaptive nature. On the right, you can see certain pictures, a birthday party, a software development, or a tour and travels, what you're going to do there. In this, um, I think most of them are going to be of an adaptive nature. Now, when it's a birthday party, it will be a semi mixed off. Maybe it is a 50% adaptive, 50% predictive. I know the venue. I know the people going to come. Maybe my son or daughter may ask a different flavor of a cake in the last minute. That can be adaptive. So I will tell that it can be 60% predictive and 60% adaptive, 40% adaptive. And software, software, it goes mostly 20, 80. That is 20% predictive and 80% adaptive. That's how it will live. And travel agencies or travel plans, it can be either way, right? Now, the point I want to convey here is you should be aware that in this world, the project is always predictive and adaptive. And now, how to do a project work if it is predictive and adaptive? You need a common understanding of what is a project all about. You need a common understanding of how to utilize the best methodology. Now, PMP stands to talk about this and talk about how a project comes inside the organization and how they design on the predictive adaptive nature and again how to do a project in a proper life cycle and there is a good explanation about it because they talk a little bit about agile factors also now when you talk about adaptive it talks about iterative and incremental i'm sure many of you are aware of these factors in project management let me show a few more factors on this area right at least you got an idea about what is predictive adaptive which comes under the pmp uh, part and uh, this part of iterative and incremental, if you're not aware of it, um, of course, this Mona Lisa picture was clicked before this uh, COVID-19. After this, maybe she's staying at home, not sure how much heavy she became now. Let's talk about iterative part. Iterative part talks about you keep reviewing and keep upgrading the system until it reaches the final goal. That is iteratively start working out, improving your system, right? Incremental is you start delivering the packets. You start giving the output. Your project model is like that. I cannot expect Butch Khalifa to have a deliverable coming up every floor. No, it's not usable. Only when it's fully completed, it will be usable, right? Whereas here in software, you give release one, what's up version one, what's up version two, what's up version three, I can keep giving more. Now, agile factors are uh, some of the books of uh, agile books talks about iterative and incremental. In a sense, you will keep giving the packets at the same time you keep improving. You do both giving and improving. So now we take a feedback cycle to improve your deliverables. That's the reason you get a continuous feedback points from whenever you use a system. These days they don't ask feedback. They take the feedback automatically. If you use WhatsApp, Facebook, something wrong there, automatically they collect the feedback in the background system. And from there they start correcting it automatically. Now, why I put this points is this all comes under the project management thought process. Now you understood this pretty well. 
let's see from the perspective of a PMI. Now, PMI, what they do is um, every year they desire a certain projects to do a good job and they start awarding them a best project. Now, what we'll do is we will see a project from the dimension of a winning project. Why I want to show you is in the world, there is a study says that at least 75% of the projects fails. Rest 25 succeeds. Now, what's the difference between 75 and 25 is both are same model, but somewhere there is a gap of interpersonal skills or proper communication or improper alignment with the top and bottom approach in the team. Now that puts much, much of the projects down. Now, how to improve it? That's what we're going to learn here in the PMP courses, right? Now let's quickly see what they mean by project and what they mean by success criteria. Quickly look at the video and come back. I have a short video for that. Do, do, do. Here we go. The United States Nuclear Energy Research and its Nuclear Navy depend on the Department of Energy's mission to safely manage radioactive waste at the Idaho National Laboratory. But by 2009, the lab's disposal facility was filling up and the Department of Energy predicted it would reach capacity by 2019. Time was of the essence. The ability to continue to maintain the mission of the Navy and the Navy's fleet to do what they need to do and be ready at all time, it's critical to national security. Congress approved a project to build an underground facility to house 939 stainless steel waste canisters. The site would be used for the permanent disposal of up to 20 years worth of radioactive waste, which meant identifying and managing risks well into the future. Delivery of this facility was incredibly complex. We had design, we had construction, we had nuclear safety compliance, we had environmental compliance, many, many activities happening at the same time, a lot of parallel paths. Careful planning kept the team on schedule, but four years into the project, a funding crisis put its future in jeopardy. The federal government did not pass a budget for fiscal year 2013 and that resulted in a lapse of appropriations and no money for the project. As a result, the project had to stand down and, and hold off. After that issue was resolved, the team faced another major setback halfway through construction. A lifting device at a supplier's plant failed, sending a massive chunk of concrete crashing. Since the same lifting devices were being used to move components on site, construction was brought to an immediate halt. Nobody got hurt, fortunately, but we went through the stop work process, which is in our processes here, to ensure that we didn't continue to do any hoisting and rigging activities until we understood the root of the problem and then find a corrective action to address that problem. Despite the delays, the team closed the project six months ahead of schedule and nearly five million U.S. dollars under budget. The secret to success? The strong ties built over the project's nine-year span. You have to be intimately involved and understand what's going on. You don't come into a project understanding every component of the project, but if you're willing to dive in and understand and help the individual project team members through their crises, then you build that relationship and then they'll go they'll go to the end of the earth for you. Okay, that's a project which won for the Excellence Award, right? That's a good project. By the way, this is one of the projects in the world I just thought of putting to you to give a clue of what they do in project management. But you may be surprised, hey, what I'm doing here with this project, right? Uh, it's something like a project is something so broad. That's what I'm gonna give an idea. You shouldn't be get stuck with what we do at our corporate lab with uh, say a few set of people and set of operations. That's not only the project. The project is so broad. It, it talks about the infrastructure, it's of people, it's of systems. It puts all together as a component that becomes a project. Anyway, that's a good thought and a view from the PMI awards. In fact, they give a lot of awards like this for the best projects in the world. Good there, let's move. Uh, there's one question from the PMI perspective or PMP perspective. Now let's understand how an exam question PMP will be. And let's try to answer it. There is a scenario given here. Try if you can answer this question and uh, all four are correct answers. One will be the best answer. Can you please try it out? Okay. A few answers are coming up. Okay, 
Okay, that's interesting. Most of you making the right answers there. Right, right. Okay, good there. This team is good there. You're able to make the right answers immediately. Okay, putting to the point, the question is talking about something interesting here. You receive a notification that a major item purchasing or you're purchasing for a project will be delayed. The problem is a delay. Now, the problem is delayed. It's not going to come, right? Now, how are you going to handle it? Now, there are a few answers for here. One is talking about pre-plan your project to accommodate this delay. Pre-plan. It's talking about you receive a notification. This is the current situation. When you are in a current situation, you're talking about the pre-plan may not work. You cannot go back. Notify your manager. Of course, good, but I don't think any manager like a problem. The managers like a solution. So probably you may not go for this choice to answer it. Okay, the third one, let the customer know about it and talk over options. Okay, this sounds better. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Meet with the team and identify alternatives. With these two choices, it looks closer. In PMP examination, these are the questions may come. Two, you can eliminate it pretty easier, but two will look very closer. In this two, we have to target the right answer. When you want to target the right answer, if the option D is not there, I may think of other option, right? But again, the option D is there where talk to your team and understand what the problem is and if they can bring out some answers for it, alternate option, right? In a project, if I have some problem, I may not want to go to the customer very immediately where it may fire the us. Rather, when you have a discussion with your architects, your team members, your stakeholders, and find some alternate solution, if you cannot reach out the alternate solution, then we can go to the senior management and understand how they did in the previous projects, some of the lessons learned, and there also you wouldn't get a proper answer. There is a chance we can check out with the customer. Hey guys, you know what? There's a problem happening like this. Can you find out a consulted solution within us? That may be the better solution rather directly going to the customer. So the answer should go to D. That's a point. I saw some of them gave us a C also because it looks a little tempting, but I feel it is better to first talk to the team, right? That's good. The good choice. I saw many of you give the right answers. Good there, you got some understanding. Okay, quickly let's get the answer. Answer is D. Okay, now let's go to the subject. So what all inside the PMP? Uh, if somebody asks the okay, example or somebody asks me, hey, what is the difference of PMP and other courses? I can quickly tell you that in PMP, we have a five segments of knowledge to be covered. One is on the initiation stage, planning stage, execution, monitoring control, and closing the project. Like the little girl says, you will have a five areas to be covered in project. Any project will have a start, any project will have an end. In between, you'll have something called execution. I'll tell you, here is the place we spend most of our energy. 31% of our energy is spent in execution of the project. In a sense, you make the project move forward, right? That's what you do here. Now, in order to do this effectively, you should have knowledge in few areas. What are they? Like this little boy says, you have 10 areas you should have knowledge. What are they? Can someone tell me you have some names or tags which you know before? If you see here, there is something called integration. There is something called scope. Do you see anything which you know already? Some of the terms which you feel that you already heard about it. Uh, almost all, okay, Homkar says almost all he has heard about it. Uh, but generally I get a feel that uh, we would have heard something about scope, schedule, cost, quality, resource, at times communication, risk in few organizations, procurement, somebody use a word called vendor, they want to use the procurement, stakeholders, but this integration part may be new for some of them. Telling that, hey, what is this integration all about? Okay, I can see a few answers coming up. Great, great, great. Good, uh, thanks for the answers coming up. Now, the integration may be some people knew, uh, but again, for the PMP perspective or project management perspective, these are all the knowledges we should acquire, we should have in the project management. And end of day, we have to integrate it, putting things together, like, like a music orchestra. There'll be a person in the center who is called as conductor. And this person conducts a music show where even though a lot of instruments being playing around and this person knows a full symphony of the project and start driving the show. Now, the same way in the project, you may have a vendor team working with us. 
you have a risk management team you have the resource management and system you have a quality management all this thing you will put together in call integration management so pmp talks more about integration management how you make things together right that's very vital okay good there right putting together like uh, how do you do you will have knowledge in all this 10 area they call us a 10 knowledge areas in fact in pmp you will have 10 knowledge areas and five process groups this will be explained to the depth and now the question is do i need to know all this thing prior to the classes i will tell you no if you know here and there a few terms that's more than enough for your purpose right rest all you can learn in the classes that's the aim of the course okay that sounds good now is it the only thing you learn in project management no as you're talking about the failure of the majority of the projects they talk about failure because of lack of communication a lack of responsibility lack of transparency in the project team right and now we'll talk about something very interesting we just covered in project management courses which is called as interpersonal skills what is interpersonal skills the interpersonal skills talks about how efficient leadership skills being carried out how do you motivate the team how the responsibilities are being taken care are being given over and something very interesting called as active listening i will talk specifically when you go to the course active listening is one of the area many has a problem because of which many projects delay and when you talk about interpersonal skills it is not needed only in the corporate life it is needed in a personal life also. When you go to the family, a good family life, these all skills are very vital to have a smooth and happy family life. I can see, or you can see many people don't have a better life. The same person cannot have a better life in the project or office life also. Both will be in trouble. If you don't have a good personal life, definitely will not have a good professional life. If you go and investigate it, most of the reason will start from interpersonal skills. A simple, proper communication, may be a problem a proper listening ability is not that it's a problem conflict resolution techniques is not that's a problem but you cannot think that hey it's a skill which you get by birth no you can learn the skill it's a skill which is available readily in the market anybody can read certain books and start learning it but consciously we have to practice those skills now this is a very important part of leadership part in the talent triangle if you remember it i spoke about talent triangle with the three segments in that leadership talks about primarily on interpersonal skills and this skill is a one skill puts many people in the same position for so many years they may have highly technical knowledge they may be more uh, aware of anything in the project but they cannot go higher they cannot have set up people reporting to them they cannot drive the things with the customer the only and only problem is the interpersonal skills but it is learnable it will take a little more extra time but it's worth learning right okay that covers in pmp now something more on pmp apart from the interpersonal skills uh, of course some of you would have seen this earlier on which talks about a time management we have to learn here we have learned cost management we learned scope management resource quality risk and again we've talked more about the stakeholder communication and managing the stakeholder these are part and parcel of uh, all this project management studies it could be anything on the prince 2 it could be on the pmp it could be of agile scrum certification safe certification every place will have the same concept but again it will be in a different dimension of explanation but pmp goes a little more deep inside expanding all these concepts okay good okay all good now you listen to all the subject now you ask me hey what's it for me what i can get out of it okay let's go to the main area okay now um, to get to the pmp a few questions some of you thrown up here i'll try to answer some of the questions here pmp now you will get certified when you get certified um how to get certified first of all you have to prepare for the examination and you have to write an examination so we'll start from the examination front that is a result area and then from there we'll start going back first we'll start with the examination point pmp exam consists of totally 200 questions and it would have around four hours of time to write the examination how the exam will happen the exam can happen both two segments one is in the center you can book in a center and go and write the exam this was the only mode of writing examination till april 15 2020 that is before covid getting so heavy now people used to book the center go to the center write the examination for four hours and come back and now what happened is after this covid happened a PMI opened the exam as an online exam. 
of course, this lady is very happy writing the pencil there. But now this online exam is getting very much famous. The reason being is you can write the exam at your home. Now, when you say at your home, a lot of questions starts coming up. Before going to that segment, first I'll clarify what is a passing percentage. Because many ask me the question, Siram, what's a passing percentage? Unfortunately, PMI has not declared what is a passing mark. They don't declare the mark. They will just tell you that you pass the exam. That's it. They use the only word pass or fail. That's it. They won't tell any other information. But one information they'll give you telling that you got above target, you got target, below target, needs improvement. This they will give you, but we don't know what this means. Is it a 60%? Is it a 70%? We don't know. But they give a combination of certain values for five domains and tell you that you are above target and below target. But for you, for understanding, you should understand that you have to focus only on pass percentage or at least pass value should come there. There is no percentage given there, right? Now, how do I know that, that I'm ready to go for the exam because there is no mark there? When you do the practice exam, if you cross more than 65 percentage in the practice exam, in which what we give to you, it's an indication that you are ready for the main exam. Anybody getting 65 percent in the practice exam is what I'm going to give you. You are ready for the main exam and I'm sure that you will pass the examination. Anyway, I'll talk about this a little later. For your understanding that there is no specific percentage given, but they'll tell you only you are passed. Now let's go to the online exams. Online exams, are how it works. They have two segments in online exam. In a sense, if you go to a center-based exam, they give all 200 questions at one shot. You write it, clear the exam, come out of it. But still the COVID has happened now, they have locked out all the centers. They may open the center in soon coming days. When they open it, we'll come to know some of the rules and regulations. But for now, online exam is so famous, many people started getting the exams. Now in online exam, they give it as a two segment. Segment one is, you will give in with the 89 questions to write with your laptop at your home. When you complete the 89th question, you are allowed to take 10 minutes break. And this break is optional. There is no mandatory. If you say, I, I don't want to do the break, they'll quickly start the second segment of 111 questions. Okay, let's imagine a normal scenario. I'm sitting in the, my laptop, I'm writing 89th question. Maybe it's a one and a half to two hours have passed by. At two hours time passed, I click the 89th question submit. It says the packet is over. It will ask you, you want to review the exam. If you say yes, you can review some questions, then you submit it. You submit it, it will lock. And it will tell that go for 10 minutes break. If you say no, it will continue with the next set of exam. If you say yes, you will take 10 minutes break, go out, take a sip of water, come back, sit again. Now it will start for next 111 questions. It's the second segment. Now, when the result will come is, when you complete all 200 questions, that is 111 questions you commit and you submit it, it will consolidate and give you a result, you cleared the PMP examination. This is how the online exams are working at home. In fact, I'll show some video about how it happens. Now, there are a few questions comes up, mostly when I put for online exams. What is the pass and score grade? Probably I just said that there is a only pass or fail. There is no mark system, but they give some grades. The question generally comes is, what if internet goes down? What if machine crashes? What if power supply goes out when I do exam at my home? The answer is, now what they do is they'll ask you to give their, your mobile number to them. So they'll have the mobile number with them and uh, they will dial you immediately if in case you lose a connection. And they'll make sure the problem is there or any other solution can be given. They may even give you some extra time or they may give you some re-rate of the examination if something happens here. So far, we have not heard any real case something happened like this, but the rule book says that they will come back to you. So they'll get the mobile number and they'll ask you to keep the mobile number away from the place where you reach, maybe a few meters away, but the mobile can be there, right? That they do. And how they do that? In fact, they will have a web camera in front of you like, like this, and they will keep watching you for four hours when you write the examination. They will keep your mic and camera on because it is an application going to run in your laptop. It will freeze other applications in your laptop. It will allow only one that application to run. It's a PMI, PMP application. It will be in full control of your computer. So you cannot go to Google. You cannot go open your PDF of PMBOK book. You can't do anything. You have to just do the exams. 
when you do the exam, you cannot keep your paper and pencil on your desk. You have to show the camera all over the room and make sure the room is clean enough, not having any content of PMP. This all is a procedure, okay? Um, you will learn it when you book for the exam. When you book for the exam, they explain all of these factors. Okay, that's a little about the factors, but now let's go back. I'm going in the reverse order after the exam. Now we'll go back and see how to prepare for the exam. Quickly, I saw some question popping up there. Is there 10 minutes break included in four hours? Okay, Satish, I just gave a clue there. Uh, 10 minutes break is not included in this four hours. It is out of this uh, four hours program. So you will get something called a, a break of 10 minutes free, where you can use it and come back. If you say, no, I don't want it, you can ignore it and start the next question. So I generally recommend people take the break because ADN question will be exhausted. You have to take a sip of water and feel comfortable, come back and start the examination, right? Because when I went to center-based exam, what will happen is we have to sit like this. I have to put my hands up. So invisible will come inside and ask me what do you want. I say, I want to go to the break. There, this 10 minutes was not there. So I have to lock my computer and go. My clock will be keep running on. So I have to lose my seven minutes or eight minutes for going to the break and come back. Luckily, in the online exam, that is not there, right? That's a message to you. Oh, that's good. Uh, any other questions on the exam part before I go to talk about how to prepare for the exam and what are the books to read? Any specific questions? Okay, good. Okay, I believe there is no questions. You're free to open the mic and speak. Don't worry, you have to type only. Okay, go there. Uh, now I spoke about the exam. Now let's go in the reverse way. I'm going to talk about the books to read. There are a few bunch of books in the market available. To your surprise, you will get something called PMBOK, very famous book, Project Management, Body of Knowledge. It comes from the institute called PMI. They released this book. Inheriting or taking the content from the book or extracting the content from the book, we have a book called Rita, very famous book. And another book is called as Head First PMP, right? All these three books are there. Which book to read? Any book you can read, all three are same content, same message. Language will be different. If you're very new to the management, you can take it first. The language will be very layman level language. You are so good in a sense, you have a little bit of knowledge already, but you want to go fast towards the examination, Rita is the best book for the exam. If you are exam oriented, you have a target, I want to do this, quickly exam. If you're very new to the project management, you want to learn very simple language, you want a lot of pictures in the book because some people understand by pictures. If you feel you are a person of picture person, you can go to this book. I'm such a person, I can see the picture and understand faster than the text message. So I read the, I, for me, I read this book. It may take one and a half months to read this. If you read faster, maybe two to three weeks, you'll complete the book, right? This book is, is a body of knowledge. A lot of content will be there. If you want, you can read that book also, no restriction. Now, what is free learning? <laughs> okay, now we have an extraction of Pemba, Rita, Head First, all will be extracted inside this book. Out of that, we'll give 21 days of study plan towards the examination as a PDF copy. The PDF copy will be on a specific date. For example, you say that July 30, I want to go for exam. I would prepare a plan for until July 30, what all you have to read, how many hours you have to read, what material test you have to take, everything will be written there. You want to just print it, put on the wall, start seeing that, wake up in the morning, start reading. That's how the plan will be there because this program of PMP needs little focus and plan and a strategy to clear. If not, it will be long running. I've seen some people reading for two years and three years could not clear the exam. The reason being is there is no target date. We should have a target date and also we should have a plan to prepare for it. If not, it'll keep running, keep running, keep running. It's a long running. And also we'll give some question banks to you which you can prepare and go for the examination. Right? This is a little about the book stuff. Any questions on the books area? Before I add one more question here. Ah, Lakshma is putting, what is the passing? I think Lakshma spoke about that point a few minutes back. There is no passing score. We get only pass or fail with the grading system. Right? We have above target and below target stuff. Okay, good there. I hope Lakshmi got the message. And uh, that's a little on the book side. Let's go a little more back to see some more stuff. Now, uh, okay, how can we learn this? In the sense, I know books are there, exams are there. Now you have to learn it because a proper way of learning will help you to go towards the examination. 
What do you mean by proper way of learning? You have to sit with your project management coach and start observing the content. What do you mean by observing the content? There are a few information in the PMBOK guide where it should be learned in a proper way. In fact, when you want to go for the examination, your eligibility says that you should have at least 35 hours of learning with the PMP coach. This will make you eligible to go for the examination, right? Not only for eligibility, at least you should understand the subject. Now, what do you do? We have uh, online training because um, our classroom training is going to be very tough these days with the COVID. Online training, you can use any device and start listening to the classes. How the session happens, it happens on the weekend. If you go for the IST, it is a timeline. Dubai, Dallas, New York, your timeline will be something like this AM and the morning you will see the course. Now, why this course is important? This course makes you to learn the subject to the depth. Will this alone help me to clear the exam? I would say no. This is an introduction to the subject. After learning this introduction, you have to read the books for at least two to three weeks of timeline that will give a grip on the subject. Now you listen to the subject with examples, stories, a lot of videos, case studies, and then you open the book and read for at least three weeks of time. So three weeks of time of reading the books, few weeks time of listening, combining together, you will practice some practice exams which I'm going to give you. When you do that, you may cross 65 to 70% in a practice exam. When you do that, you are ready for the main exam. Good, there's a question. Let me quickly take the question and come back. Omkar is putting a question. Before one starts to practice the exam, do you recommend to read Pimbuk or Rita? If uh, one wants to read both the books for better understanding. Okay, Omkar, I think your question itself has an answer. For the better preparation, some people go to two books also. But for me, I read only one book. It depends. It depends on your reading ability. It depends on understanding ability. Some people read two newspapers, but still don't understand the news. They'll go and watch a television to understand the news, right? It's about the reading ability. If you have a good reading ability, some people understand one book enough. I, I, I have read some of the blogs. They say that read three books four times. I'm not sure it is. It's not needed. You are not doing any proofreading here. You are needed to read the content with a good ability. But at the age of 30 or 40 or about 25, you have a lot of distractions like mobile, television, laptop, family. Now you cannot focus like what you did at the age of 18. It's so hard. That's why you have to read two books. They're reading it, right? But to me, what I did is I took one book very strictly, head first PMP. I read it thoroughly and I do practice questions behind the chapter, every chapter. So when I write a practice question, I make a lot of mistakes. So I understood that this area I have not understood properly. I go back again and read it. And some of the areas I really don't get it, then I go to Rita or Pimbok. This is how I did, right? So anyway, it's a good question, Omkar. But still, if you feel that you need more books, yes, please read it. I'm not stopping that. Okay, good then. Now, there's a plan for preparation towards examination. This is very, very vital because PMP is not a, just like a course. Even I have did Agile courses, I have did ACP, SAFE. Those are the certificates you read for three, four days to clear the exam. But PMP is not such an exam. It needs amazing planning. Now, what you do is uh, you go for three weeks planning. There are some people tell that, Shiram, I want the PMP immediately to be done. My promotion is pending. Uh, I'm getting immigration. I have uh, something on my salary hike going up or something should happen. I have to do it very faster. So for the people of the three weeks, that is 21 days of preparation. How many days you have to read? How many weekends you have to read? What you have to do the last five days? I'll give a systematic approach plan. If you are pushing fast to complete in three weeks of timeline, you will read at least four hours per day on the working days. And on the weekends, you have to spend eight hours. When I say eight hours, many people eyebrow will go high. Eight hours, man, I can watch two to three movies, but cannot read eight hours. Okay, if you're such a person, I would recommend you to go for the eight weeks plan. Eight weeks is a little leisure where you have 56 days to prepare, prepare for the exam, where gradually you can read two hours on a working day, morning one hour, night before going to the bed one hour, right? And again, six hours on the weekends, it's doable, right? And the last five days are very crucial. I will start following up with you regularly touching with you what you're doing, right? That time you'll focus at least eight hours on the last five days. Usually I recommend people before the last five days of the examination, kindly take off from your work. 
because you should not have too much of distractions. The previous day of an exam, if some of your manager asked some questions, you will get too much distracted. You cannot focus on the examination, right? So now I gave you two things on three weeks and eight weeks. Now one more category is here. Some people tell that, Shriram, there is no urgency for my examination. I don't want three weeks. I don't want eight weeks. Give me a leisure time. I will do exam after three months or five months. If you are such a person, that's also fine. But at least read one hour per day continuously. If not, you will lose the rhythm of it. If you feel that after one month, I'll start the reading, you will totally forget the subject because it's so big subject and a lot of content, you will lose a track of it. So let's be on track of the things, right? Okay, now I spoke about three weeks and eight weeks, right? Now, how to go for the examination? We will give some practice exams, four practice exams with 200 questions each. If you write it and you are consistently above 65%, you are well and good for the main exam. That's a simple thing. How do you evaluate it? I will evaluate it. I will tell you that, hey, you are going above 65 continuously. Your level is so good to go for the exam. Now, the next question is, what if I'm not getting 65% practice exam? I'm getting only 50% or 55% what to do. And the first exam when you get 55%, I will start watching out on the area barrier down. I would recommend certain books, certain pages to read. After reading that, your scores will start going high. So don't worry on that area. It will be taken care. Okay, that's a little on the planning part. And uh, something I want to talk about the discipline which you should maintain towards the examination. What do you mean by discipline? Yes, I will be giving certain assignments to write. Somebody looking at me, assignment? Oh my God, my daughter used to write, my son used to write. No, I won't write. <laughs> okay, I know it's hard, but a few writing habits help us to connect to the subject regularly. Because uh, we, we may be out of academics, we may be out of reading habit for five years, 10 years. Some people more than 15 years have not read anything in your life, except newspaper, you've not read anything. I'm just telling you, I'm also like that for some years back. Now writing will help you to connect well. So I'll be giving certain assignments every week, you will start writing it, small content, one or two pages. And I'll expect you to write some chapter test, which is really going to help you, right? That will help you to improve your level of knowledge. And one other thing which I love and I tell people is get away or give a holidays for five inch, 15 inch and 55 inch. Can someone tell me what is this three items? Five, 55, 15, any clue? Cell phone, tablets and TV, home car, got it, man. <laughs> okay. On, the, on three weeks or four weeks of timeline, I would kindly recommend you to stay away from this stuff. That doesn't mean that you cannot do office work. You can do office work, but little focus is needed. Um, if, if I want to give you a fake information, I can tell you that, okay, spend your holiday, but still you will clear the exam. I will tell no. PMP is not such an exam. You need to focus. So our role is to help you on that 21 days of timeline or 50 days of timeline, continuously helping out to clear this exam. If uh, you're going to support that area, of course, you can do that. Because uh, when you want to go for the leadership track, these are very vital, where you improve your skills of being so much focused, right? Without focus, you cannot achieve it. Okay, that's about the study plan stuff. Uh, any questions on this area before I go to the next area? Boop, boop, boop. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't think you need to type it. Probably you can speak up if you have any questions. Okay, I believe there is no question. Let's go to the next area. Uh, hi, Sridham, sorry. Yeah, hey, Shiva, yeah, Shiva, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, Sridham, the uh, thing is that you mentioned the, if we can consecutively take four sufficient exams where we get more than 65% of marks, uh, then we are ready for the exam. But uh, I've seen uh, in many of the forums, uh, they say that it should be more than 80%. You, you've seen what, Shiva? In many of the forums, I've uh, I've uh, seen people uh, saying you should get a consecutively 80% in four of your consecutive exams. Okay, okay. So your 65% uh, is good enough uh, for the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, now the question to you is 80% on which exam? Yeah, the, the online uh, simulator exam that is available, commercial online simulator exam. Yes, we have to know. Okay, thanks for the question, Shiva. I appreciate it. Yeah, see the question what you're putting is and what I'm asking you is, uh, which exam? It depends on which exam, which ground you are practicing. Are you practicing with the Bangladesh cricket team and telling that I'm going to go for World Cup? 
or are you practicing in Australia? I will be setting up the team, which area you have to practice, right? The ground where you practice. You should get ready for an Olympics game and go and play the Asian games. If you prepare for Asian games and you play in the Olympics, are tough there, right? And uh, I know in, the, in some of the forums, they start writing about these factors. It depends on the intensity. It depends on the level of that particular exam which you are preparing. So the exam, what I am recommending is, will have 65% is more than enough to clear for the main exams, right? So that's a message. So uh, forums can be talking about some exam. I'm not sure which exam is that. So our exams, which is so intense and so has our highest quality, where it will make sure if you cross 65, you will definitely clear the main exams. Hope that answers you, Shivan. Yeah, I yeah, got it. Uh, one more question. Yep. Yeah. One other question coming up. Oh, one more question. Yeah. Lakshmi here. Actually, uh, see, I asked about like what is the percentage uh, passing? Right. Means, um, I'm not asking about the marks. Like uh, it is like a uh, like a hundred people if you are attending, they are like uh, they are allowing top ten members passing percentage. That is the like passing or how it is marks based. Like you told like six five percent of in uh, and. Uh, Lakshmi, I think you lost your voice. Uh, when, you, when you say passing percentage, you're talking about how many people clearing PMP or what is the passing score of PMP? The question is confusing. Yes, yes, correct. Ah, question is correct. Okay, um, for your question, if you're asking about a passing percentage of the PMP, I'm sure you Googled it. There is no passing percentage leaked by PMI. But the, some people study says that 50% people clear the examination. What do you mean by 50% people? If 10 oh, okay. people clear, I will clear the examination. Now, uh, this is purely on the preparation mode. I am conducting this program for so many years. So far, I don't see any failure. Okay. We see always success. Okay, thank you. Because of the intensity level of preparation, right? That's very important. But still, I hear okay. about the failures also. People fail and then call me from different places. Shriram, I tried some other place, doesn't work out. Can I go for it? Okay. But one thing I filter out is if you don't cross 65 to 70 percent in the exams, what we're going to put here, I would not recommend you to go for the main exams. So I will be filtering out the failures. Okay. That's the reason we don't see any failures. Anyway, thanks for that good question. Okay, so, thank you. Right. I can see a couple of hands coming up. Uh, Who is that? Uh, can you put the question? Uh, yes, please. Hitesh, go ahead. Hitesh and Daya has some question. Please go ahead. I can see your hands up. You can speak up. Yes, it is. No, it's fine. Oh, okay, you're fine. Yes, there. You have any question there? I saw your hands up. It, yes, in some of your preparation, um, do you go over um, like there are different sections that discuss excuse me, on the exam, they have a variety of different scenarios. Right. And in each scenario, some of the answers might be close together. Right. And it's important to know the process groups, which I don't understand yet, because um, I'm just starting. But right. um, uh, it's important to know what response, uh, if you have multiple choice, fits in what process. Right. Or does this happen first, second, or third in the process? And so like that, to me, some of the questions are, are kind of not trick questions, but you, yeah. you just have to understand yeah. like what comes first or last or like that. In, in your session, do you ever cover like what comes first or what's more likely in this yes. particular process? Because it might be first, second, or third, but it might not be in the process. And I get confused Okay. Uh, currently on how to answer some of the questions, mm -hmm. it's okay. just not going well. Got you, got you. It's not only you there. There are a lot of people have this problem. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, what we do, I'll tell you. In the classes, we're going to run these classes for uh, weekend. That is uh, four hours on Saturday and Sunday to one of us. Every week, what we do is we take one knowledge area and we go deep inside to explain the concepts first clearly. While explaining the concepts on the subject while explaining, we will have some scenario questions on every day. And the question will be explained with the keywords 
what keyword you should observe in the question so that you can answer the choice perfectly. Now, what's the problem is when you go to exam hall, uh, one question can go for one minute, 30 seconds. That's the time. 200 questions by four hours, it goes one minute, 30 seconds. When we are in exam mode, our brain sometimes will not process much faster as we want to get the answer. After you come out of the exam hall, if I ask the same question, you'll answer it amazingly great. But when you are in the exam mode, your brain may not function properly. So for that, we have to practice it. How to practice this? When you read the five lines of question, I will tell you which particular word or which particular sentence you have to see as a keyword. When you start practicing like that for nearly 1,000 questions or 500 questions on a practice exam by watching with the keywords, they will be able to relate that keyword with the four choices given as A, B, C, D. Usually, I'll help them with the elimination technique. We will eliminate A and C as our wrong answers. Now, B and D are the correct answers. In this correct answer, there will be one best answer where to choose it. Now, how do you do that is in everyday class program, we have to do that. Along with that, we do one interesting factor. We have something called breakout or, or working session. Every week, we will give a uh, sample project. And as a team, you will all work together on the project in a virtual session, where whatever concepts you learned in stakeholder management, risk management, schedule management, you will implement in the sample project which I'm going to give you. Now, what happened is you learn the theoretical concept with the examples and videos. Now, we are going to apply that in a particular working session. When you do that, you get the concept with the depth. Along with that, if I'm going to give some tips how to look at the question, how to choose the answer, this combining together, definitely you will easily win the examination. Hope that answers you there. Yes, thank you. Well, good there. Fine, any other questions? I know the exam part is a very interesting part. Is there any difference between MBA and PMP? Okay, that's a good question from Deepak, <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, Deepak, uh, MBA is an academic course which has been spread across for two years program, right? And it talks much deeper and also they have a lot of practical knowledge happening. This is given for the people who come with a lesser amount of experience that they go there and do it. Or if you go for an executive MBA, it will be a one year where they push all the content into your mind. MBA is always top, nothing equivalent to that. But if you do in a reputed institute, if you do just an MBA, it won't work. If you do in a reputed institute, yes, it is highly valuable. Now, what is PMP? PMP talks about practical knowledge of the implementation and some of the key factors about the scheduling and stakeholder or risk management, which is core concentrated focus on the project stuff and which is readily take away and start using it. It's a kind of ready stuff to use it, right? That's happened with PMP. So always I will tell MBA with a reputed institute is highly graded. And again, if you don't have much of a time to do an MBA and the expensive process, and people go for the PMP, which is a short win within three months of time. Hope that answers you, Deepak. Okay, quickly I'll go to the top most few more questions. Um, okay, which has a temporary purpose? Okay, I saw some of the questions in the beginning, right? Uh, some people ask me, who all can do the certification? I think I explained that, telling that this certificate can be done by anybody from any domain more than three years of experience and coming from any background. Don't worry about it. And again, how to fill the exam application form, how to apply the examination, it's all taken care of by me. You don't need to worry about it. For you, just sit and listen to the classes and go for the examination. In fact, if you join the classes by May 23rd, May 23rd, we have a batch starting for PMP. If you join the May 23rd, it will go till end or middle of June. By end of June, I will start working out with you for the application processing. I will collect the details from you. We will work together to fill up the application form. I'll help you every part of application filling up and applying towards the examination, right? So don't worry about your experience. Don't worry about your application processing. Will there be audit? Will they will check my company? Will they check my manager? Nothing. Everything will be taken care. You, If you keep your PMP as a secret agenda in your company, you don't want to declare to anybody, it won't be known to anybody. It will be a secret, okay? Don't worry about it. We will work out on that part. I'm doing it for so many years. I know how to do this stuff, how to fill the form, how to apply for the form. We'll follow all the PMA rules and we'll do it specifically and perfectly there, right? 
Um, I think I spoke over some, some fractals. Abhijit asking PMP versus SAFE. Um, I think uh, PMP is something more on project oriented. SAFE talks about a scaling the agile factor, right? I think you know about it, Abhijit, but still for your quick information, that is on agile, where it is on scaling at the big at the program level, right? Anyway, it's slightly out of the topic here, but still we can learn that stuff a little later also. Okay, I'll go to the last question here, SJ. I am a student of MTech Industries Engineering and Management. Can I avail the two academic year as mine experience? Yes, SJ, you can do that, provided your institute qualification has been agreed by the PMI Institute. PMI Institute has certain level of agreement telling that these courses from these institutes can be accepted. If that is mapped there, yes, your courses can be taken into there, right? Uh, but again, let's watch that. We will talk later on this part. You can reach out to me and my team members. We will evaluate from tech where you did and we'll start analyzing that part. Hope that answers you. Hi, Sridham. Yes, Vinod. Uh, Vinod here. Uh, actually, like in my company, I'm working with Tata Advanced Systems. Okay. So I'm just talking to my program managers regarding this. So what mm -hmm. they are suggesting is like just taking an exam is not going to help you. Okay. So you should have some certain like, you should have some practical experience. So being okay. in just taking an exam, exam and adopting it, it's not going to help you. So they okay. are suggesting me to take as a mentor. So work under them, like kind of a, take a project. So work okay. under them. So then you will be like, think of it like going for it. So this is what suggestion they are giving it. Okay. So okay. that is what like, mm. yeah. Okay. Good, good point. But when they give a suggestion, are they giving you a project? Uh, yes, like uh, in the sense, like my one of my program manager, which I'm working with, and like right now in my projects. Okay. So in the sense, like that they are not going to alert me completely, but mm. it's my again, like uh, apart from my work, current work, what roles and responsibilities I have, so okay. I have to work extra hours for this. Okay. Okay. Good. It's a good thought actually. If they encourage you, do it. But the question is, there is a student at the age of 19 going and joining an MBA. And this person coming from a reputed industry at the age of 21 as an executive MBA. And he becomes a CEO of a company. Did anybody question him? He has experience? Uh, no. How you don't question him? Because the thing is like, they have evaluated it and it's he's com already coming from the uh, reputed, as you like said, in a reputed institution. Right. So yeah, they will be uh, guiding him. So they will be giving that uh, required skills already on, into him. So he right. will be evaluated before taking that position. So yeah. that that right. clears like, yes, he is right. able to handle it. Good, good point. The same way, PMP has its own standard. You are coming with three years of experience, minimum, some knowledge, and you're learning the subject and you're going to implement it. Two ways you can see that, yes, I will learn all the stuff. I will then come for the education. Fine, no, nothing to stop there. You have enough time in your life. You have enough time for the promotion. Good. But again, it's also possible by learning, you can implement it. It's a two-way. So some people, by practical knowledge only, they gain the knowledge. Yes, they have to go through that. Some people who can learn from the books, simultaneously do the activity of real life. Yes, it's going to help them. right? So there is no hard rule saying that a person with the 20 years of experience can become a great manager. No. Age of 20, somebody can become a CEO. Same experience level, more person will come and do a great job. It differs, right? So management is something so different. Um, I, I agree with some of the points of your senior management talking about it, but still, this will just drag your time. I'll tell you, after two years, you'll be in the same place. They'll give you a project, they'll do something, and end up with nothing would have happened. You'll be in the same place, doing some more forward emails and forward information, and maybe some meetings. That's it. If you really want to grow up, you have to get qualified. If not get qualified, it's going to be really tough. It's not only for PMP, anything, we have to do it. Practical application can happen parallelly. It should not be only the way to learn. Learning can happen as the right way on the books and also practical stuff. Both can happen simultaneously. Hope that answers you. Yeah, well, uh, that answers fine. But still like, uh, okay, so that you told like in a current company, I can get this uh, certified uh, then I can just, but what about like when I'm going to apply for the other companies? Okay. So till they, they will look at your practical experience as well, right? right? So it's better like not having only a certificate, but at least when you have like some practical experience, mm -hmm. so they may feel, yes, he's a better candidate than you. Like, because 
if two candidates are there both are having pmp certificate mm-hmm. but the thing is like this coming this person is coming from the pro- program project management experience itself right when i'm coming from the different background so they are definitely they are going to consider him so how it is going to help me yeah of course right you are going to have 3 to 4 years of experience by the way how many years of experience you have you know now years of experience sorry 7 years so when which domain you are working now uh, it's into material and process aerospace division great so now seven plus years of experience with that you have a certification definitely your way of language will be different when you communicate in interviews at least when you apply for the job as a associate manager or the lead position or a senior manager definitely you will have a bleeding edge when you have a little experience with the certification with you with the zero experience certification it's going to be tough you're not coming pass out from college right you're coming with seven plus years of experience in this seven plus years of experience some will be junior level some would be lead level some would be role played as a manager level also at times not all the project in year of 365 days of course sometime you would have an opportunity to play some role as a manager to lead a team take a role take a responsibility and that's a communication you have to give it's not about the paper which says that a senior manager in the paper with the pay slip of ctc no it's about the language what you going to talk there your profile will have a value with a little of experience and with a certification definitely will get a winning edge but if you question me shiram somebody comes with a seven years full of manager knowledge of course it's a winning edge they will win the game and go off then you have to find another company but the point is are you striking towards the leadership role are you working towards a target if you are working for it yes you have to qualify towards it got you vinod yeah thank you right qualifications are very important um, i'm sure many of us agree that experience is important but again qualification sets a track i tell you why in the job market when a resume comes in they look out for when you recently got anything qualified when your resume says that at the age of 21 this person got b or mtech or mba after which last 7 years 10 years or 8 years nothing has been learned definitely your resume will not get inside even though you have a good experience telling that last 12 years i'm a great manager nobody will call you the market is looking out are you having a passion towards learning are you having upscaling interest those are the people being called for the interviews generally but along with that if you have experience definitely it adds value but get qualified something not only for the management study even in a domain you have to learn something learn something on the domain learn something on a particular subject what you are good at it it's very very important that's what the market is looking at too great there good thoughts good questions let's go on i know time is there i think this taking more than 10 minutes now any other questions on the exam part before we see the fee structure Ooh, there's a fee structure okay this is the fee structure for uh, pmp in the sense uh, if anybody knows about the fee or don't know about the fee here it is here you have uh, exam fee this is an exam fee there is something called a uh, center base there is something called a uh, member non member lot of stuff there if you are a member your exam fee goes around 405 dollars and if you are a non member you have to pay around triple 5 dollars right uh re examination let's not worry about this now let's not think about re examination now the examination part generally goes around 405 or triple 5 dollars but if you are coming from the background of non member what do you mean by non member pmi institute has something called membership when you say membership you will pay around 129 or 139 dollars to become a member anybody can become a member i can become a member my brother can become a member your friend can become a member membership is open for anybody when you become a member you can download few of the books you can listen to some of the webinars some of the videos can be uh, downloaded not downloaded listen to lot of sources available when you get 129 dollars paid as a member and this is valid for one year of time when you are a member in this one year time run and you decide that let me go for the pmp exam then they'll give you some discount right that discount can go for 405 ideally you get 11 dollars discount if you are a member and you are going for the pmp exam some of you tell that shiram i don't bother about membership man directly you'll go right exam come out of the exam if you do that triple 5 dollars you will pay if it's an indian value it can be around 40000 inr where you will pay and go for the examination right that's pretty much on the part any questions on the exam fee structure anybody have any thoughts on that 
By the way, this fees you will pay only when you're ready for the examination. Let's say you start the classes from May, but you want to go for exam in the month of July or August. By the time when you and me sit and prepare your application form, that time we have to pay this exam fee. So assumption is by July end, July beginning or August, you will pay the exam fee if you start the preparation now, right? That's how it works. Okay, there's a question. Quickly take this question. Um, how much CAPM cost? Uh, what is the training fees? Yeah, Deepak will share those details. CAPM should be around uh, $325, if I'm not wrong. I will see that and update you CSJ again. And the CAPM is lesser than PMP cost, right? It's uh, 120 questions exam, so it will be lesser than that. So you will get around $375 or $325. I'll update you, right? And uh, Deepak will get the details from the team in some time. Now, this on the exam fee. Now, what will happen for the re-examination? Re-examination happens like this. In case, by any chance, you lost the exam. But generally, nobody lose the exam with me because I don't allow you to go to exam until you are ready for that level, right? In case, by some reason, you lost it, what will happen is they have a retake option. Retake doesn't come free. You have to pay for it. So if you go for the second time examination, they reduce the fee from $555 to $375. Now you feel that you know, for second time also something went wrong. What to do? You can go for third time. In third time, again, they'll charge you $375. Again, third time something went wrong. You know, what to do? <laughs> Nothing can be done. Now what the PMI Institute says that is in one year, you can take three times examination. Still, you don't clear the exam. They'll tell you, please take a break of another one year and prepare yourself and then come for the examination. So I think that's a very decent uh, approach to do that, telling that, hey, probably you have to reread the content, understand the content a little more deeper and come back, right? That's very vital. Okay, these are some of the fee structure for the exam part. Okay, then what? Okay, when you do all this stuff, you're going to get your certificate and that will be a very happy day like this, where you're going to get your certificate. Now, this is the original certificate, which comes as a PDF copy to your email. And also they'll send a hard copy to your home address. And every three years, you'll start renewing your certificate, as I said at the beginning of the program. And nowhere in a certificate, they'll explain your scores. They will not tell about target, below target, anywhere in this place. They won't use the word pass and fail here. It's only will tell that you are a project management professional. It's a very decent certificate. And many people love to frame it and put on the wall and sit and watch like this gentleman because it's a very hard earned certificate, right? Good there. So um, what are the things? Any other questions on the certificate for the more? If not, quickly I'll get to the uh, close segment because many of you are there and shooting extra time. So what are the courses are there? Uh, some of the courses which talks about, uh, which we have also sharing is, one is PMP, which we spoke about now. Other one is called PMI ACP, Agile Certified Practitioner. Anybody working in Agile team who want to be Agile coach, who want to be a lead, they can go for these courses. We do have sessions running on ACP. And we have something called SAFE, that is a Scaled Agile Framework. It's again, a little higher than the uh, Agile factors. They call about scaling Agile. Agile teams, more than one or two Agile teams work together how they can scale it up. For this also, we have um, certification going up. It's pretty easy. In fact, this happens on May 30 and 31, two days of program. You will listen to the program and read for a couple of weeks and you will clear the examination. It's a very simple exam. And ACP, it's quite okay. I will not tell so easy, but still you can prepare in three weeks of time and clear the examination. Whereas PMP needs a little more time. It can go between three to eight weeks of time of preparation. It needs intense care towards preparation. That, that's why the PMP is. So these are certificates which you are on your plate. If you are coming from Agile background or your company has some more uh, Agile cases, probably you can choose Agile courses also along with PMP. Um, Agile courses, Deepak Daya is asking course, Agile courses, yeah, okay. Uh, safe courses will be of two days training, which will be done and you can go for examination third day or fourth day itself. Whereas Agile course ACP, this will go for three weeks of time and over the weekends, right? In three to four weeks of time and weekends, you will learn this course as Agile course, right? It's very easy. This is a 21 hours of learning. This is a 16 hours of learning. 
and uh, PMP is 35 hours of learning. I believe this gives an idea. This is a room. 35 hours you have to learn for it. 21 hours you have to learn for it. This is 16 hours you have to learn for it. Right? These this exam you can go faster. This will take two to three weeks of time. This will take three to eight weeks of time. Right? This is how it goes. Okay, that's pretty okay. much. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, sorry to interrupt you here. The, uh, the thing is, uh, these days the world is moving towards uh, agile methodology. More, more and more number of projects are implementing agile methodology for their projects because uh, they want to accept the changes, uh, uh, the changes which they see uh, when they're designing the scope and etc. So, do you think that PMP? Uh, even the world is moving towards agile methodology, PAP is still valid uh, or it is better to be take uh, ACP? Beautiful question, Shiva. I appreciate the question. If you read the PMBOK book, it has full of agile coverage. In your PMP exam, you will get 8 to 12 questions in agile. This is a concept. Uh, if you read the book of PMBOK 6th edition, every chapter will have a concept talking about agile but they're not drilling deep inside. In fact, in the beginning of the session, I was talking about predictive approach and adaptive approach. This concept is well explained in PMP books. So PMP is not outdated. Probably we have to read the content to understand it has both predictive and adaptive approach. It has both. But again, PMP is used in multiple domains. When you talk about agile, it is used in a handful of domains. Probably if you come from IT industry, you may think it's so great. If you go to construction, manufacturing, pharma, medical, what not, if you go to any domain, this is the only certificate highly reputed with along with agile flavor. They have it already for information. But again, um, we cannot tell world is moving towards agile. Agile is one of the concept which is already there, which is there for the last 50 to 100 years. Agile says that satisfy the customer help them to deliver faster, okay? But again, your right question is, if the organization is focusing too much on Agile and telling that, hey, I want you to talk about Agile in the team, bring up Agile team very faster, yes, ACP is a good certificate to go for it. Or you feel that in Agile, you want to talk about leadership. I want to talk about program level, portfolio level. I want to talk to the customer at the higher level of a big Agile team you can go for a scaled agile framework, right? It's there. But for information, PMP already has an agile inside that, but not highly questioned in the examination. Reason is this exam is taken by people from different domains in the world, which don't even know what is called agile. If I ask somebody in a different industry, what is agile? They will tell that it's a flavor, it's a new cake, or it's a bird in the forest. They will tell different meaning. People coming from the IT background, they know a little bit about the Agile factor, right? So in the books of PMP, Agile is there. But if your organization is asking you more on Agile, I will recommend to go for ACP or SAFE certification. Hope that answers you. Yes, you mean to say that the PMP is having still more weightage than uh, PMA ACP, right? Not at all, still, it's the highest weightage in the world. <laughs> what, because as I was explaining a lot of factors now, it has a lot of factors about how to handle a system from one end to another end. If you learn it, you will try to see that. Maybe one of the classes will start listening. It has a lot of depth of information. And also it talks about interpersonal skills. It also talks about the agile topics, what we are discussing here, right? There are a lot of subject. PMP is so broad and wide, it's still respected. But again, with the PMP, you have one other agile course. Your value is going to be very high. To be honest, I learned PMP. And again, very next year, I completed ACP. Next two years, I completed SAFE. I feel highest value. When I go to any customer, I will have a mix of all. To be honest, I'll tell you, none of the company says that we will follow only PMP. We will follow only ACP. We will follow only SAFE. No, every company is using a hybrid model. They make a best out of the market, put together, and that company will follow that hybrid model. So. You are, they will expect you to be a person who can think broader with a lot of concepts in your mind, not telling bookish way of, okay, only follow PMP, only follow ACP, it won't work, right? That's what I'm seeing in the market so far. Hope that answers you. Okay. Yes, thank you. 
Great, great. I think you're shooting on the time there. Uh, if any more questions, we can take those questions now. And uh, if not, what are the areas we covered today? We touched certain areas like uh, what is PMP at the highest level? Benefits of getting certified. Yeah, we covered that. And like what are job opportunities? How is market trending towards now? What's uh, what subject covered in PMP? In the sense of uh, what are subject inside the PMP? Like I talked about five process groups, 10 knowledge areas, right? Those five and 10, I just gave an idea, right? And again, exam approach, how to go towards it? What are the books to read? And some of the study plan, three weeks, five weeks, or going a long duration, right? Fee structure about the PMP exams. We didn't talk about the fee structure of our classes, which our executive team will communicate to you a little later. And maybe some video we saw that to understand some factors, right? I know PMP is a little far and broad subject. I try to put certain information which can help you. I know the initial half an hour I was spending time to explain what is PMP and subject, which maybe is something a little over the head also sometimes. It's important to understand what the course is all about. Without that, if you want to go for a certification, it will burn your blood, right? It's something you have to understand subject. By the way, today you had a good amount of learning of what is PMP and what is the benefit of PMP. But again, it all goes back to your way of utilizing it. I have seen many people who cleared the exams, not only this certificate, other certificates, but they don't materialize it. Materializing is very important. What do you mean by materializing? You have to try some opportunities in your organization. You have to try something in other companies also. And also, first of all, you have to try to implement in your projects. Learning certificate, keeping inside the home doesn't serve the purpose. You have to start implementing it. So what's the beauty of implementing? As you implement more, you will see you are upscaling yourself where a growth pattern will be so high, right? So I'll tell you, PMP is highly in demand in the market and still it's highly demanded. It's going to be more highly demanded because in June, sorry, January 1st, 2021, they're going to change the exam pattern. In that exam pattern, some of the way you asked here, Agile question is going to be pumped inside. They're going to put more agile questions in the examination to make sure PMP covers both the world of predictive and adaptive nature. So the certification value will go very high and by the time it will be so much needed in the market, right? So with that, we're coming to the end of the session. Uh, any other questions I can help you if I missed out? Sir, I have one question. This is Abhijit. Yes, uh, yes, the major, the major thing that I am uh, uh, facing is that you know, uh, like after uh, Chan, we have entirely new course. So, what will be the validity of the older course? Like, why should we go for older course and we won't go for new, newer version of PMP? Uh -huh. Like, if someone asks me, how can I justify this thing? Sir? <laughs> okay. So, if if we say that in that case. From 2021 January, my PMP certificate will become invalid. No, it's not exactly that it will become invalid. But you know, when I go to organization and I am claiming that I am a PMP certified, with yes. this much, and they are asking me that why you haven't go for a newer version. <laughs> First of all, the world doesn't know what is newer version, what is old version. Second point to you: whenever someone gets certified, they are enhancing their knowledge by 60 PDUs every three years. So you yes. have to learn the subject continuously. It is something like a doctor profession. A person 40 years back became an MBBS doctor. Now, the new medicine of MBBS has improved a lot. I cannot question the old doctor, why don't you qualify as MBBS last year? In the last 40 years, that MBBS doctor would have learned all the terms and conditions of new learnings. That's why they became an expert doctor in the market. Do you agree on that point? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's why it is called as project management professional. You have to underline the word professional. A professional, a doctor is a profession, a lawyer is a profession. You keep enhancing your knowledge. You cannot tell that I will learn tomorrow and I'll go day after tomorrow for interview. No, that's not the case. You have to digest the subject. You have to learn it. You have to practice it. You will go through a lot of concepts in real life. That's learning important. Right? So it's not about the exam, it's not about the book, it's about the knowledge what you gain as a broad person. So that's what the PMP talks about. So don't worry, okay. whenever you get qualified, your certificate is always valid like a doctor until you keep reading okay. it. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Great. Good there. Any more questions I can help out? I'm sorry I shooted out 25 minutes extra. I know I want to attend some of the questions. Yes, please go ahead.
ஹாய் ஸ்ரீ எஸ் சதீஷ் இன் கேஸ் இஃப் ஐ ஃபெயில் டு அட்டன் யுவர் ஆன்லைன் கிளாஸ் ஆன்லைன் கிளாஸ் ஹவு குட் ஐ லேர்ன் தட் செஷன் ஓகே வாட் வில் ஹேப்பன் இஸ் அவர் ஆன்லைன் ட்ரெயினிங்ஸ் ஆர் ஸ்டார்டிங் பை மே 23rd ஓகே and uh, this is going to be weekend sessions and it's a um, video live session like same like this now okay. what will happen is the session if you miss out that day night itself you will get the video recording in fact every day night when the program gets over the video recording is shared with you you can download it you can play it you can listen right away so you won't miss any session maybe your presence your specific question you would have missed out that you can question us in the email or a whatsapp group what i'm going to have specific for you so you will not miss anything you will get every content as you go through the classes hope that answers you yeah it's clear thank you great then good then i am a question that can help you okay quick update uh may 23rd we are starting our new pmp batch already i can see bunch of people enrolled our current batch we have around 40 people 43 people or 45 people who are completing by this saturday that is tomorrow and the new batch is starting by next week i'm expecting the same number of people can join from different countries we get around 12 or 13 countries joining for the classes so if you feel it's the right time to join yes it's the right time because it's a weekend you can start learning it and if you feel that shiram with the pmp i want to learn other more courses also we have pmi acp which is starting on june 20th june 20th the weekend classes are starting for the acp certification and again we have safe program scaled agile which is starting on may 30th all these programs i will be conducting right i have this license and i have the rights to conduct the program and also i am qualified in that so we will conduct the exam and we'll be um, internal exams to make you sure that you are ready for the main exams and you will get qualified right so that's pretty much from my side i see one more thought question thanks for everything good then okay uh, first of all thanks to everyone for joining this program i know it's a friday working day it will be exhausting for you also but again it's good to see you all and share knowledge with you thanks all for joining this program this recording will be shared with you you can listen later if you miss certain points some of you put me questions here i can i was able to answer some of the questions if i missed your question you can call me back or you can message me to the team as well we'll try to help you out right once again thanks to everyone for joining here and have a great friday we'll catch up soon in the live session thanks all okay thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank you thank you very much hey, thanks to me thank you thanks sir thank you